Okay. So first things first, I'm going to slow cook the pork filling or the pork meat for these tamales. It's somewhere between four to five pounds of pork uh, country style ribs and it does have a little bit of the bone in it. I typically like to use um, the pork shoulder roast or the Boston butt cut of pork but I it was not available when I needed it <laughs> so I'm kind of improvising and using this cut of meat. I'm going to add one or two bay leaves, half a piece of uh, a small onion in there. I'm also going in with four mashed cloves of garlic. I just kind of gave them a press. I'm going in with one teaspoon of cracked black pepper, two and a half teaspoons of salt, two cups of low sodium chicken broth. Now I'm going to set my slow cooker to high and this is going to cook somewhere between four to six hours or until the meat is tender. Okay, so this is now tender. It, I actually let this go for about six hours and you can see it's falling apart. So I am going to remove it from the crock pot and I'm going to reserve the broth and fat as well. Okay, so for the corn husks, I am using one bag. I believe it's a pound bag. I could be wrong. I'll put it somewhere here at the bottom. <laughs> um, so I took them out of the bag, and these are fairly soft already, but sometimes I get bags of corn husks, and they are super dry, like stiff as a board. So what I like to do is soak them in cold water, separate them, and give them a good rinse to remove any debris. You'll want to make sure you do that. Now that they are rinsed and separated, I have them here in a pot of water, and once it comes up to a boil, um, I'm just going to let them steep for several hours. And this is a great way to soften the corn husks. It makes them a lot more pliable to fold and create your tamal. Okay, so this water, I had to, I had to lower the heat. It was boiling. I'm just going to make sure these are submerged. And if you want to put something heavy on top, you can. I'm just going to dunk them like that. And I'm going to shut off the heat. And let these soak for an hour or so, or until I need them. That's just going to make them soft and pliable and easy to work with. Okay, so let's go over what I like to use in my recipe. By the way, I'm just going to preemptively say, if you cannot find uh, the chile pasilla or the chile ancho, you can use just the guajillo. Uh, if you want to use 12 guajillo chiles, that definitely works. This is just the combination I like to use. And I want to show you, this is one large ancho chile. Typically, well, let me show you. I'm working out of my own cookbook. By the way, check the description below to where you can get your copy. <laughs> um, here in, in the recipe, I have two dried ancho chiles. This one is really large, so I'm just going to use one. But typically I find them, and they're a lot smaller, kind of like this and even smaller. So um, that's just, so if you see me use one and not two, that's why. This one's really large. And I'm going to be using eight guajillo chiles and two pasilla. I am going to remove the stem, the seeds, and give the flesh a really good rinse, because check that out. These come with a lot of debris on them. Okay, so my chilies are cleaned, rinsed, seeds are removed, the stems are removed, and I have them in a pot of water. To the pot of water, I'm also going to add half of a small onion and three to four cloves of garlic right into the pot. And I'm going to bring this up to a boil. Now that it's boiling, I'm going to shut off the heat and I'm going to let this steep until everything is softened and that could take 20 to 30 minutes okay so now that my chilies are softened I'm going to add them right into the blender cup and I I personally do not like to use the broth or the boil I'm sorry the boiling liquid from the the softened uh, chilies I mean you can if you want but I prefer to use broth okay so Onions, garlic, all the softened chilies are in there. So now I'm going to add one cup of my broth. This is the broth that um, I ended up with from the crock pot when I cooked my meat. So now I'm going to puree this well.
Okay, so my chili puree is done. And I am going to reserve, um, about a third cup is going to go into the, the masa dough, and the rest I'm going to combine it with the meat. Okay, so I'm going to work on the meat filling. So here, I'm not even gonna add oil because the fat from that rendered from the pork meat, it's, it's enough. I'm gonna add that. Now for the chili puree, I typically like to strain my puree, but because I used my Vitamix today, it really pureed it well. I didn't have to add a little extra broth to run it through a, a fine wire mesh strainer. But if you have a blender that really doesn't break it down and puree well, then you're probably going to want to strain it. At least that's what I prefer to do. So I made a little bit extra chili puree because I'm going to use it for another recipe later. But if you follow the recipe, whatever is left from the chili puree, aside from the quarter cup to third cup that you use in the masa, um, just to add it to your meat. So I'm going to combine this well, and this is the part where you want to taste your meat filling, and if you want to add salt, if you want to add some chicken bouillon powder, some extra seasoning, spices, this is the time to do it. Give that a mix, and this is done. Okay, so I'm going to prepare the masa. Here I have four cups of instant uh, corn flour for masa. I'm going to add to my four cups of instant corn flour, I'm adding two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, two teaspoons of salt, give that a mix. Now I'm going to add about a cup of my shortening here. Again, you could use lard. Now, if you want to use oil, then I would suggest starting with a half cup of oil. If you start with a full cup of oil, I think it's just going to be just a soggy mess. So I would say a half cup. So I'm going to kind of break apart this shortening or lard or whatever it is you're using that's uh, softened here and mix it in. And things will get messy. Clean hands are always your best friend in the kitchen. So now I'm going to take my pork broth from the, the stewed meat, and I'm gonna start with about a cup, another cup, and work that in. Okay, so at this point, I've worked in close to three cups of my broth, but now I'm going to add a little bit of this chili puree like a quarter cup to a third cup. Now I'm going to mix it in. And I, I should say that the chili puree is optional because I know some people just don't add chili puree, but my grandma, my abuelita Fas, she added the puree to the masa. It gave it good flavor and color. What you're ultimately trying to um, achieve is a soft masa dough that goes through your hands like that. So now I'm going to whip this with my hand. You could use a hand mixer if you have one strong enough for this. But I'm going to mix and whisk, not whisk, whip. Whip the masa for about five to 10 minutes. Okay, so my masa is combined, mixed, and hand whipped very well. So I just put some cling wrap on the top because I don't want it to dry out, but I do want it to set until I need it. Okay, so to put these together, you're going to take your softened, pliable, pre-soaked corn husk, and there is a smooth side and a rough side. Sometimes it's hard to tell, but for the most part, it, you can just kind of feel it. So this is the smooth side. I'm going to take some of my masa and spread it. And I don't have large hands, so my tamal is probably not going to be maybe as large as yours is. And actually, I'm going to take a little bit off of the top because this will kind of puff up and kind of spill out. You don't want to bring the dough all the way to the top. Okay, so here is my corn husk with masa. By the way, there are so many different ways that you can spread the masa on here. There are those little masa spreaders. You could use your tortilla press. I've seen that done before. I just use a little wooden spoon and kind of spread it. Okay, so now I'm going to add my meat filling right in the center 
There we go. Now just roll it this way, roll it that way, and fold up once, and that's it. Um, some people like to take extra corn husk like strips and tie it around. That makes a cute little package, but this is how I do it. So onto a baking sheet, and I'm just going to repeat the process. Okay, so here is what I managed to get out of today's batch of tamales. I managed to get three dozens of tamales. That's 36. So here I have a, this is a 16 quart pot, I believe. Um, and I have a small little heat proof cup. This will withstand the, the heat. I'm going to place that right in the center and I've added around two quarts of water uh, underneath this little steamer basket. Basically you want to fill the water right before it comes out of the, the steamer basket. You don't want the your tamal to sit in the water. So now I'm just going to stack my tamales around the cup. Okay so all of my tamales are stacked facing upright and now I'm going to take extra corn husks that just were too small and just cover the top and it kind of helps if you tuck in like the the thin part and fold it over and it creates like this umbrella over your tamales now I'm just going to take this tea cloth or cheesecloth I don't know what you want to call it just a clean cloth and you cover it so I'm gonna get this on the stove. Okay, so I have the heat on. I'm going to add the lid here, put the lid on top. Once the water comes up to a rolling boil, make sure it stays at a constant rolling boil. You may have to add water throughout the cook process, but it's going to take at least an hour and a half or so to get these cooked through. So once the water gets to the point where everything's steaming and boiling, I went ahead and turned it down lower uh, because I just want it at a constant boil. And this is the time where you start to count your cook time. Don't start your cook time before the water boils because then you're going to be like, oh, at an hour and 30 minutes, it's not done. So once it gets to the steamy boiling part of this process, that's when you start counting your cook time. So I'm gonna let this go for about an hour and 15 minutes to an hour and a half, and I'll check the first tamal. So I'm just going to carefully peel this back here and just try to um, not burn myself. <laughs> the best way to test this is just carefully see if you can remove it from the husk. And it's almost there. You see how it kind of stuck here to the husk? That means it still needs to cook a little bit more. But for the most part, yeah, it's coming off fairly easy. So it's almost done. I'm going to give it another, I'd say about 20 minutes. I am going to let my tamales to continue cooking. And I just want to reiterate that cook time does always vary. Um, especially for right now, I have my water at a constant rapid simmer. But if it is at a hard boil, it will definitely progress things a lot quicker but you are probably going to need to add more water. And the way you do that is you pour the water down the side of the pot, never directly over the tamales. That'll just create more work for yourself and just, it'll, it'll make a mess. It also depends how tightly packed you have your pot. That also adds more cook time to get the tamales to cook through and set. Um, and the ultimate tip I can give you is after about an hour and 15 minutes, take one out and test it. As soon as your tamal slips right out of the corn husk without sticking to the corn husk, that lets you know, that's a good indication that your tamal is set and it's done. So what, at that point, I would shut off the heat, remove them from the pot onto a baking sheet, and then let them set for 20 minutes, then serve. So hopefully that helps you if you are trying this recipe or just making tamales at home. So here's my second test one, and this one, oh yeah, see how it doesn't really stick? Now it will need to set, but this is coming out a lot easier from the corn husk. See, yay!
This looks, ooh, it's hot. That looks fantastic. Okay, so I have removed them from the pot. I'm going to let these set for about 15 to 20 minutes. Actually, I say 15, really around 20 would be better, but I can't tell you, the people behind me really want tamales. <laughs> My son's like, mom, I want another one. So I'm gonna let these set and I will show you the finished product. Today I'm going to be making tender and moist turkey tamales. This recipe is good if you have leftover turkey or a turkey that you need to make even after the holidays. So here's how I do it. First, you'll want to pre-soak your corn husks. Sometimes I buy packages that are really pliable even though they're dried, but these are extra dry. So I am actually going to put these in water here I have a pot with water. I'm going to add them to the pot. I'm going to bring the pot of water up to a boil. And then once it's boiling, I'm going to submerge the corn husks, turn the heat off, and just let them set and soak until I need them for at least an hour. So now I'm going to work on my chili puree. Here I'm using eight wajillo chilies that I've already removed the seeds and stems from, two ancho chilies and two pasilla chilies. If you can't find the other chilies aside from wajillos, just use all wajillos. I do that all the time. I'm giving these a good rinse and I'm going to add water to the pot and I'm going to bring the pot of water to a boil. Now I'm also going to add half of a small onion, three to four cloves of garlic as well. And once my pot of water comes up to a rolling boil, I'm just going to submerge everything, press it into the boiling water. I'm going to turn the heat off and let them soak for at least 30 minutes or until the chilies are pliable. Okay, so I've been busy doing a lot of other things. So it's been about an hour that they've been steeping and soaking. They are nice and soft. So I'm going to add them right into my blender. Now you could also use some of the soaking liquid to help puree the chilies, but I find that sometimes it's bitter. So I'm going to add around a half cup to a cup of low sodium chicken broth. You could use chicken stock or broth. Now I'm just going to blend this until it is a smooth puree. You could also strain this for anything that didn't get blended, but I'm just going to skip that step. Okay. So now for the turkey. If you have leftover turkey, you'll need two and a half pounds of chopped or shredded cooked turkey meat. Here I have a 10 pound turkey that I have thawed. It was an extra turkey that I purchased. So I, it's completely thawed. I'm going to add oil to the skin and I'm just going to season it with a rub that I made. I'll put the ingredients below this video. You could season it with just salt and pepper. I'm not even going to stuff the cavity. I'm not even going to truss the legs. I've tucked the wings under and I am going to be baking this in a preheated oven at 325 degrees Fahrenheit for around two hours, two and a half hours if you decide to stuff it. And I also added some water to the bottom of the pan, around three cups, and I'm baking this until the internal temperature reaches 165 to 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can definitely cook your turkey however you like to cook it, but ultimately you will need around two and a half pounds of cooked turkey. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the filling for my tamales. Here I'm going to reserve a third cup of that puree that will be going into the masa later. And I do want to show you that the turkey yielded around two cups of liquid and that does include turkey pan juices and turkey fat. I am going to skim off two tablespoons of that turkey fat from the cup of liquid that I reserved and I'm adding it to a preheated pan. And now I'm going to add the entire blender of puree or what's left of it, aside from that third cup that I reserved. 
And I'm also going to add around a cup of some of that turkey pan juices and swish it around the blender to get out any residual puree that's left in the blender. So now I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. Now, if you find that's too much salt or you don't wanna add that, add the seasoning and spices of your choice. You'll want to do it now. You'll taste your puree for flavor and you add what you like. I'm going to add my salt to this. Now. I'm going to add all of the turkey meat and combine it well and let it simmer for about three to five minutes until everything is combined and simmered and cooked. And this is what you end up with. This will be the filling for my tamales. Now I'm going to prepare the masa. Here I have four cups of instant corn flour or I'm using the brand Maseca. I'm adding two and a half teaspoons of baking powder and one teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna give that a mix. And for the masa, I'm going to use four cups of liquid. And here I'm going to add one and a quarter cups of this shortening that I have left over, but lard is definitely something that is more traditional and that you can use. Now I'm going to add that third cup of chili puree that I reserved from earlier. And I have my broth mixture on the side. That is a mixture of pan juices from the turkey baking and low sodium chicken broth. If you don't have turkey pan juices but you have turkey then just use four cups of low sodium chicken broth or stock or if you don't have that either use warm water and you want to add it little by little because even though i'm saying four cups it might only take you three and a half cups to moisten the maseca and get it to the texture that you prefer for your masa so I'm going to mix this with my spoon and then I'm going to fluff it up and mix it for about five to 10 minutes until it's all combined and fluffy. And thanks to my commenters, one commenter said that if you add a little bit of your masa into a glass of water and it floats, then you know the masa is ready. So here are my pre-soaked and cleaned corn husks that I had in that pot of water earlier. They are soft and pliable. So I'm also gonna be using my turkey filling and this is basically the chili puree and the shredded turkey meat and again you'll need around two and a half pounds of cooked turkey meat for this and over there on the side is my masa that i prepared okay so to assemble your tamal you will take a corn husk there's a rough side and a smooth side you'll want to add the masa to the smooth side of the husk I'm going to take a couple of tablespoons of masa dough and spread it the best that I can. I like to use a little flat wooden spoon. Use the method of your choice. And once my masa is spread on about two thirds of the tamal, I'm going to add my filling. And you can add a little bit or a lot, it's up to you. Now I'm going to fold one side over and this extra piece of corn husk, you can rip it off. I'm just gonna sort of fold it back and then you enclose it and you'll want to fold it up on the seam just like that and that's how you do your tamal you could also use little extra pieces of corn husk to sort of tie and secure it but i find just folding it up it does the job so now i'm just going to continue spreading the masa and assembling all of my tamales i also want to mention that there are so many methods that people use these days to spread the masa on the corn husks so use the method that you prefer and that you find most convenient. Because I'm a creature of habit and this is how my grandmother taught me, I just resort to using a small wooden spoon. So once I'm done assembling all of my tamales, I ended up with around 51, which is pretty good because with this recipe, you definitely can get around 40 to 45. So I did pretty good. So now I have a 16 quart pot and I've added around two and a half liters of water to the bottom. I'm inserting the steamer plate with a stone bowl in the center and I'm going to stack all of my tamales around the bowl. Now I always like to say the tighter you pack your pot that will definitely vary the cook time. These will take somewhere between an hour and 30 to two hours depending how tightly you pack the pot. So now that all of my tamales are in my pot, I am going to add some leftover corn husks. By the way, for this entire recipe, you'll need at least 50 good corn husks for the tamales, a little bit more to add extra on top here. Now I'm going to add a damp tea cloth right on top of those corn husks. 
going to tuck that in. I'm going to cover this with the lid and I'm going to bring the water to a boil. And once the water starts to boil, I'm going to bring it down to a medium heat just to give it a gentle constant boil or gentle simmer and it's going to cook for around an hour and a half. That's when you start the cook time, when it boils. So this pot actually took me an hour and 45 minutes to cook and you can always test it by grabbing one and seeing if the tamal will come out easily from the husk. That's when your tamales are done. And even then, even when they come out of the husk, they might still be sort of soft and tender. They will still be cooked. You just need to let them set. So I'm going to remove all of my tamales from the pot, stack them here on my baking sheet, and I'm gonna let them set for about 30 minutes before I serve, and they will still be warm. Okay, so these cooked to perfection. Up next, another variation of tamales. Today I'm going to be making an easy recipe for beef tamales. Now the amount that I'm making today is definitely a smaller amount than what I would make for the holidays, so feel free to double or triple this recipe. But these beef tamales are so tender, moist, and delicious. Here's how I do it. To start, I'm going to soak around 40 to 45 corn husks. These are fairly pliable, but sometimes I get them and they are really dry. So you may want to soak these in hot water overnight, but here I'm rinsing them for any debris and now I'm going to soak them for about two hours or until they are pliable. Okay, so next I'm going to work on my meat. I am going to be using around a four pound chuck roast. This is a boneless chuck roast. You could use the cut of beef of your choice. I'm actually going to cut this into chunks. And basically for this recipe, you'll need at least two pounds of cooked beef. So this chuck roast was a little over four pounds. So I'm sure I'm going to have leftover meat, but that's fine. I'm not complaining about that. So I'm going to add all of my chunks of this boneless chuck roast right into a crock pot. You could use the cooking method of your choice. You could cook your beef on the stove top and braise it or roast it in the oven. Ultimately, you'll want to end up with tender beef. I'm going to add one beef bouillon cube to this. You could add two teaspoons of salt if you wanna skip the bouillon. I'm also going to be adding two cups of water. I just want to see if I can yield some extra broth that I'll be using in the puree and the masa. Now I'm going to add one small onion that I've halved, three to four cloves of garlic, and I'm also going to be adding one dried bay leaf in here. I'm going to cover it and let this cook on high for about six to seven hours. Like I said earlier, if you do not have the time to slow cook, you can definitely braise this on the stove top for about three hours until everything is tender. Now I'm going to work on my chili puree. Here I have two pasilla chilies, two ancho chilies, and I'm also going to add eight wajillo chilies. I'm going to remove the stems, and I'm also going to remove the seeds from this. Once I've removed all the stems and seeds from the dried chili pods, I'm going to give them a really good rinse. Then I'm going to leave them in the pot and fill the pot to submerge the chilies, and I'm going to take that right over to the stove, and I'm going to bring my pot of chilies up to a boil. Once my pot of water with chilies starts to simmer and boil, I'm going to turn off the heat and allow them to steep until pliable. I think 30 minutes at least should do the trick, but longer is better. So it's been about six hours here that my beef has been cooking in this crock pot. So as you can see, there's a lot of rendered broth here in this crock pot and the meat is tender. So I'm going to remove the onion that I placed in here and I'm actually going to set that aside because I will be adding this to my chili puree when it's time to blend them. And then once I remove the onion, I'm also going to remove all of the beef. Now any broth left in the crock pot, I'm just going to pass it through a cloth over a strainer just to remove any bits that I don't want into my broth and whatever broth is left, that's what I'll be using in the puree and the masa. And this entire recipe, you'll want to use around four to five cups of liquid. Um, 
in this recipe. That is including whatever you use in the puree and in the masa. Here I have three and two thirds cup of beef broth, so I will definitely be dividing that. <laughs> okay, so my chilies are nice and pliable. I'm going to add them right into the blender. Now I'm going to add one two thirds cup of that beef broth and the rest of the beef broth I'm going to add to the masa. So this should be enough to get things moving here in the blender. I'm also going to add that onion that I reserved from the crock pot. And I'm going to be adding two fresh cloves of garlic. And now I'm just going to cover this with the lid and I'm going to puree it. After pureeing everything, I'm going to pass it through a fine mesh strainer just to remove any bits that did not puree well. Now if you have a high powered blender, you might not have to do this. I'm going to reserve a third cup of this puree to add to the masa. That is actually optional, but I like it. Now I'm going to chop all of my tender beef and I'm just going to chop it as best as I can. You could also shred it with your hands if that's the texture you want to the beef. Now in a pan, I'm going to add two tablespoons of oil. I'm going to preheat it and add my puree. I'm using something like a medium heat, nothing too high. And I'm going to add the puree to the pan and bring it to a simmer. I'm also going to add around a teaspoon and a half of salt. And I do want to mention, you want to add the salt to your taste. You might find a teaspoon and a half to this is too salty, so maybe use a teaspoon. It is definitely up to you. So I'm going to give this a mix and bring it up to a simmer for about a minute or so. And once my puree has cooked and simmered, I'm going to add all of my chopped beef. I'm going to add it here and give it a good mix and I'm just going to let it simmer for a couple of minutes and the beef filling is done. For this recipe, you'll at least want a pound and a half to two pounds of cooked chopped beef. Okay, so now I'm going to work on the masa. Here I have four cups of instant corn flour. I'm going to use a gloved hand to mix this. I'm also going to add two and a half teaspoons of baking powder. Now growing up, I don't remember my grandmother actually using baking powder in the masa, but you guys have mentioned it in the past on my other tamales videos. So I started using it and I like it. It does give it a nice, light, softer texture to the masa. Okay, so now I'm going to add a teaspoon and a half of salt. Things like salt and seasoning are up to you. So if you want more salt, you can add it. I'm going to go ahead and combine that. Next, I'm going to be adding beef tallow. You do not have to use beef tallow, but for those of you curious of what I'm using, this is what I'm using. And I'm using around a cup of this, a cup and a quarter more like. I will put the weighted measurements in the description below. So now I'm just going to mix this until it's combined well. You can definitely use lard or shortening in this. Um, if you want to use oil, I don't have a lot of experience using oil in masa, so maybe start with the three quarters of a cup. So now I'm going to add that reserved cup of chili puree to this. This was a third cup of chili puree. That is optional, but I like chili puree in my masa. Now I'm starting with two cups of that reserved beef broth, and I'm just going to combine this well. I can already tell that it's going to need more liquid, so I'm going to go ahead and get around one cup of warm water that I added to that chili puree cup. That's why it's that color. And I'm just going to work my masa, mix it vigorously until it is the texture of Play-Doh, a loose Play-Doh. You want it to be able to squeeze easily through your fingertips. So be sure to have more water on the side as you put together your tamales because it does dry out. You know, once the water soaks into the instant corn flour, it could easily dry out. So my masa is ready, my beef filling, and here are my pliable corn husks. Now I'm ready to assemble these tamales. There is a rough side and a smooth side to the corn husk. You'll want to add the masa to the smooth side and just spread it all over the midsection to the top of the corn husk and now I'm going to add my beef filling. The ratio of these ingredients masa to meat filling is definitely up to you and I'm just going to continue making my tamales until they are done and this recipe easily can make around 30 to 35 tamales. While I continue to assemble these tamales I'd just like to share a story. Anytime I make 
tamales, whether they're sweet or savory, it always reminds me of my paternal grandmother. I lost her when I was nine, so I always look back and only wish I had more time with her because I know she had so many wonderful recipes that she would have loved to pass on, but I always have the memory of her delicious cooking. So all of my tamales are done. So here I have a 16 quart pot with around two and a half liters of water at the bottom. I'm going to add the little steamer plate at the bottom and a little bowl right in the center. And I'm going to start stacking the tamales upright around the bowl. Now I'm working with a 16 quart pot. You probably could get away by using maybe a 12 quart pot with this amount of tamales to cook. But I will mention the tighter you pack the pot, the longer it takes to cook. So the cook time will vary. Now I'm going to add leftover corn husks to the top of the tamales to cover them. I'm going to place a damp cloth on top. Then I'm going to cover it with a lid. Another trick or tip that you can use to ensure that your water is boiling and to make sure that there's still water to boil at the bottom of the pot is to add marbles or coins. I can hear when the water's boiling, but if you use the coins, once they stop stirring and making noise, that's when you know you need to add more water. I'm going to turn the heat on high, bring the water to a boil, then start the cook time. It'll take about an hour to an hour and a half, and I'm excited. It has been one hour and 15 minutes, so I'm just going to remove one tamal and I'm going to see if I can get it to come out clean from the husk. That is the indication you are looking for to see if your tamales are done. And I have success. So I'm going to remove all of the, the tamales from the pot and set them aside. You wanna let them set for about 20 to 30 minutes and then serve. They should come out easily from the husk. And I want to show you. This is still warm, it's mildly hot, and it comes out so easily from the husk, and I'm going to cut right into it to show you how tender, soft, and moist these come out. Just like that, you have delicious beef tamales. Okay, next, I'm gonna show you how to make bean and cheese tamales. Some with jalapenos, some without, but they're all gonna be good. So I'm going to start on the filling first. Here I am scooping five cups of drained beans. You'll need somewhere between five to six cups of beans. And to puree well, I'm going to add one and a half to two cups of the bean broth or juice. Now I'm going to puree well. To a preheated pan with oil, I'm going to add my puree. I'm also going to season and salt to taste. You can add any seasonings or flavorings to this if you prefer. I'm going to add around a half teaspoon of garlic powder, a half teaspoon of onion powder, salt and pepper to taste. I'm going to combine well and cook over a medium low heat. You will need a lid or a splatter guard because this does start to pop and bubble as the liquid evaporates more. Eventually, you'll want to end up with a thick paste-like consistency and cool completely before adding to your tamales. For the masa, in a large bowl, I've added four cups of instant corn flour. I'm using the Maseca brand. I've also added two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, one and a half teaspoons of salt, and I'm going to give that a mix. Now I'm going to add one cup of softened vegetable shortening. You could also use lard. And I'm going to add that and give that a mix. And little by little, I'm going to be adding around three and a half cups of warm chicken broth. I took three and a half cups of hot water and added one tablespoon of chicken bouillon powder to create the broth. Once you've added all of your liquid, you'll want to mix and whip very well for the course of five to 10 minutes. And once it's done, I'm just going to cover it and set it aside until I need it. For the corn husks, you'll want to at least have 50 good corn husks. Here, I took a bag, it's around a pound bag, and I'm cleaning them and separating them. And once they're rinsed well, I'm adding them to a pot of boiling water. I'm gonna let them boil for 30 minutes or so and just let them steep until softened. 
And here I have my husband helping me just getting the right size for all of the tamales. Now I'm ready to start putting my tamales together. Here I have the masa, and for the cheese I'm using a pound and a half of pepper jack cheese that I cut into just long little strips. And the amount is up to you and the type of cheese is your preference. Here I have my completely cooled bean puree and corn husks. So you'll want to take a corn husk and work with the smooth side. There's one side that's rough and one side that's smooth. On the smooth side, you'll want to spread some of your masa. Once it's spread, you'll want to make sure not to take it all the way to the top because this will sort of puff up as it cooks. So now I'm going to add some of my bean puree. And as you can see, it's almost the same consistency as the masa. I can touch it without it sticking to my hands. Now a piece of cheese, then you're going to fold each side overlapping each other and then take the bottom part of the tamal and fold it up along the seam. And that's it. You could also tie it off with extra corn husk, but I find this convenient. Now I'm going to repeat the process until they're all assembled. Okay, so I managed to get 41 tamales, and these are ready to start cooking. And I did have cheese left over and some of my corn husks, but that's okay, it's not gonna go to waste. In a 16 quart pot, I'm adding two to two and a half liters of water. I'm gonna add the little steamer plate at the bottom. And I'm going to add a stone heat proof bowl. I'm gonna flip it over and start stacking my tamales around it upright. And I thought I filmed it, but I didn't. But here's some other footage of when I made some pork tamales. So I'm gonna take the extra corn husks and sort of create this umbrella over all of my tamales. Then I'm going to cover with a tea cloth, cover with a lid and set it on the stove to bring the water up to a boil. Once the water starts to boil, I'm going to lower the heat just slightly to keep it at a rapid simmer and let it cook for one hour and 30 minutes. You want to make sure to start the cook time once the water starts to boil and not before. Okay, so while my tamales are cooking, I want to bring up a couple of tips and points when you are making tamales. First, when you start to cook them, if you pack the pot tightly, adding more tamales, you know, filling your pot to the brim, the cook time is definitely going to take longer, which that's not a problem. Just know that the cook time for what I'm using, it, it's going to vary. Also, if you have your pot of water boiling at a hard boil the entire time, yes, it's going to probably cook quicker, but you'll probably have to add more water. And by doing that, you'll need to pour the water on the side of the pot, not on top of your tamales. If you pour it on top of your tamales, it's gonna make them soggy again. So don't do that, that'll make a mess. But those are a couple of tips as far as cook time. Now, while making them, there are so many methods to spreading masa. You can use a tortilla press, which I think is really popular now. It, it makes it a lot easier. You could also use one of the tamal uh, masa spreaders that works or a spoon, a butter knife, or whatever makes you comfortable. So anyways, I hope those tips help you. Back to the tamales. Okay, so it has been an hour and a half and check this out. All of that gooey cheese is melty and it actually does look cooked through, but I am going to test one. The best way to know if your tamal is done is when you remove it from the corn husk and it comes out easily. If it sticks to the corn husk, then it's not done. It needs a little more cook time, but already I can tell this one is cooked through. Now that they are all cooked through, I'm going to remove them from my pot and let them set for about 15 to 20 minutes and then serve. I will link my other tamales recipe videos below but bean and cheese are my favorites. Let me show you what I do with leftover tamales for the next day. This is one of my favorite breakfasts. So recently I made bean and cheese tamales. Check the description below this video for the full recipe video link. Now I froze half of them and the other half I kept in the fridge. And growing up, 
The next day, or even a week later, we would reheat these on a comal. Now you can definitely steam these for about 10 minutes or so, microwave them, whatever you find convenient. But I just wanted to share something very nostalgic when reheating tamales and make a tamales breakfast. So here I have my cold tamales and I'm going to take a couple of them to make breakfast along with some fried eggs. It's very simple, but gosh, it's so good. What I like to do is place the tamales first in a cold pan, griddle, or skillet, then turn on the heat. This allows for the tamal to gradually heat as the pan starts to preheat. Because if you put it in on a scorching hot pan, it'll start to burn the corn husk before the inside has a chance to really warm and heat through. So the name of the game here is to use a medium moderate heat and over a period of time, you just sort of turn and flip your tamal in the corn husk and eventually it heats on the inside. And the time varies. I'm gonna turn this down to medium heat because like I said, you want it to warm through on the inside before the exterior burns too much. So my tamales are bean and cheese. I like to make some fried eggs with this. You could make them scrambled, over easy, over medium, over well, or sunny side up. I guess I'm going for broken today, a broken yolk egg. It's all good, you guys. However you wanna make your eggs, do that. These tamales remind me of my childhood. All my tias, grandmothers on both sides of my family always warmed up tamales this way. And it didn't matter what presents were under the Christmas tree. The thing that mattered was this wrapped tamal sitting on your plate served by someone you love. It really was about the food in my family. And making this breakfast reminds me of all those good times as a kid when life was a lot simpler, when my dad was around. So this is definitely something he would like to eat. Now you can serve this with salsa. I had a tia that made a mean chile piquin salsa. It was so good. But I'm gonna opt for Louisiana hot sauce. It's one of my favorites. You could do Tabasco, you could do any hot sauce or salsa that you like. But this breakfast might not look pretty when you plate it, but man, is it good. So I woke up early today, so I'm having breakfast in peace and quiet by myself in my office. And I'm gonna have some cafecito along with this. This is really just a favorite of mine. And this is just a holiday treat. I'm gonna sit here and think about all my loved ones that are still with me, that I'm thankful for, and even the ones that have passed. This little breakfast, it's not much to look at, but it means a lot when I'm thinking back on family.